Let's close our eyes for prayer. Our Father, we thank you at this time. We bless your name. We thank you for what you are doing already. You are touching every life. And no one here will remain the same in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, we're getting ready for a significant life. Every life before me right now, make significant in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. And the children of God said, Thank you very much. The message we have now is titled The Price and the Price of a Significant Life. That means we're talking about a significant life, but the significant life is not cheap. And yet, I need to say it is not inaccessible. That means we can reach it, we can touch it, we can have it, we can possess it. But it has a price we have to pay. After we pay the price and we have that significant life, it brings a reward, brings joy, brings fulfillment, brings a price. If you're going to have keep, possess anything good, you have to pay something for it. We're looking at Matthew chapter 13. In Matthew chapter 13, verses 45 and 46. Matthew 13, verses 45 and 46. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls who when he had found one pearl of great price he went and sold all that he had and bought it as we talk about the significant life we understand we have something to do as students in preparation for that significant life. There is a pathway, a highway that we ought to take that will lead us to that significant life. And after arriving at that significant life, there is a process of keeping, maintaining that significant life very quickly then we're going to talk about three things number one the students preparation for a significant life you have to prepare the students preparation for a significant life if you find anybody in life just roaming about or loafing is because earlier in life, they didn't prepare. You are going to prepare. Are you there? You are going to prepare. Then, number two, the student's pathway to a spectacular life. Your life, as was said earlier, will shine. You will grow, you will glow. Your life will not be ordinary, it will be extraordinary. Your life will not be just like everybody else. Your life will be spectacular in Jesus' name. There is a pathway that leads to that spectacular life and the Lord will show us in this message. Number three, the students progress in the spiritual life the students progress in the spiritual life we're coming to number one can you tell me number one the students preparation for a significant life 
because of the importance of this message and I need to tie it to the life of the student because you are the student if I were able to come to you right there I will take your hand hold your hand and I will get you to that significant life in Jesus name so I'm going to use the letters of the word student everybody say student how do I know a student? Number one, S, studios. Studios. If a person is going to reach the significant life, he'll be studious. T, teachable. He will be teachable. There are many things we don't know. And the reason why we go to school is to go and learn. It's not the reason we have teachers. And whatever subject it is, those teachers teach us, teachable. You understanding. If I hear I don't understand, how will I pass my exam? Understanding. D, disciplined. You know when to talk. You know when not to talk. You know when to write. You know when not to write. You know where to look and how to look when to study and when to pray disciplined e expectant i go to school because i'm expecting at the end of my classes i will bring something out you will bring something out and what you bring out will not be ordinary paper you'll bring distinction out in jesus name and noteworthy Noteworthy. That means somebody will be able to write something on you. Somebody is going to write your biography. The children coming after you will study what they have written about you in Jesus' name. Noteworthy. T. Transformed. Transformed. I'm going to look at that now as we look at the student's preparation for a significant life. Psalm 27 verse 4 Psalm 27 verse 4 One thing have I desired of the Lord and that will I seek after A student must know that he's looking for something he's seeking for something that's why he goes to school it is not just that daddy said I should go I'm going mommy said I should go I'm going I'm looking for something one thing have I desired and that will I seek after that's why you are preparing Philippians chapter 3 Philippians chapter 3 we're reading from verse 13 Philippians chapter 3 I'm reading from verse 13 brethren I count not myself to have apprehended but this one sin I do it says I'm not lazy it says I'm not idle I'm doing something and it is this one sin I do forgetting the things that are past if you made a great, great distinction the previous session, forget about that now and move on. This one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press on, I press toward the mark, press toward the mark. First, Timothy chapter 4. First Timothy chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 13. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 13. Till I come, give attendance to reading. Give attention to reading. You cannot be a student that will make a significant life if you don't read. Give attention to reading. I'm going to summarize that point one now. Pay attention. A student who is preparing for a significant life, S will be studious. 
Everybody say studios. I want to hear you. Say studios. Now, how do I know a student who is studious? You read to learn. Read to learn. What does that mean? It means that there is a goal in your reading. Anybody can read. We read newspapers. But when I'm going to take an exam on the newspaper items that we read, Anybody can read. We read some interesting novels. But we're not going to take any exam on that. But the one that relates to your subject, to your studies, and you're preparing for a significant life, your studios reach to learn. How do I reach to learn? There are steps in reading to learn. One, reach. Simple as that. Reach. Two, reveal. When you have read something, it's not going to stick in your brain immediately just like that. You reveal. You tell yourself, what did I read? Which paragraph was significant there? What new thing have I learned? If the teacher were to ask me about this that I read, what will I write? Read, reveal, then recite, recite. It's like you close that book and then you tell yourself, you make some points in the things you have read and you mark some words, important words, and the connection of those words will make you to be able to recite to yourself what you have read. You read, you review, you recite. Number four, you record. That means you write down. You should have a notebook, of course, for every subject and for everything the teacher is teaching. And then the extra things you are reading that throws light on what you have learned. You write, you record. Number five, you reason. You reason. It's not, you are not memorizing what you are reading. You are reasoning. Okay, they said this because of that. And this one flows out of that. And the conclusion or the corollary of what I've read now, this is the conclusion, this is the decision, and this is the corollary to that thing I have read. You reason, you relate. You relate what you have learned to life. If you're studying a science subject, how does this match this other thing in life? How does this bring a solution to this in life? And then I relate it to past question papers. I have read this now. And now if I take this past question paper and I look at this, how do I relate what I've learned to that? You relate. Number one, read. Number two, review. Number three, recite. Number four, record. Number five, reason. Number six, relate. Number seven, repeat or refresh. That means that after you have read that thing, you read it about a week ago, two weeks ago, you need to come over to that same thing again and you refresh your memory. You refresh your mind. You repeat what you have done before. All that process now is reading to learn. Reading to learn. S, what is S? Tell me out loud. Studios. What is T? Teachable. Ready to learn. The, one, the first one there is you read to learn. But this one now, you're teachable. You are ready to learn. You are all attention while the teacher is speaking. You are all ears when your teacher is teaching. And when you are in the class, your mind is there. 
because you are teachable, you are ready to learn. You, what is you there? Understanding, understanding. Reflect as well as listen. Reflect to understand what you have been taught, any subject at all. After the teacher has led the class, after you have taken all your notes, that is not bye-bye to that lesson. That is not good luck, that everything. We finished it now. No, you come back to it again. And you will reflect. You will think. You will turn it over in your mind. You reflect as well as listen. And D there is what? D is what? Disciplined. Disciplined. That means you refrain from laziness. Refrain from laziness. You remember, you have something you are running after. Remember, you have something you want to grab, you want to gain, you want to get. And that is a significant life. Be, let that be in your mind every time. You are aiming at being a doctor or engineer or scientist or researcher or a nurse or whatever. That goal is always there. And because of that, you know I must be a student studious. I must be a student teachable. I must be a student understanding. I must be a student disciplined and refrain from laziness. That means what I need to do today, I will not defy it or delay it till tomorrow. What I need to read, the assignment, the homework I need to do today, I will not defy it until next week. It means I will have to cut down on the play because that one will not contribute. Play is good if it is not taking the whole time. Work and play, but work more than you play. E expectant expectant that means receive the lesson receive the lecture expectant the teacher is coming the lecturer is coming i'm not saying well i don't think i'll get anything here i'm expecting expectant i believe that when the teacher comes in whatever he says if there's something i don't understand i will ask question and eventually i will understand expectant you receive the lesson you receive the teacher you receive the lecturer and not worthy be not worthy be not worthy let your life as a student be a kind of life that others can write notes on you another person can write an essay on you another person can write uh, you know a chapter of your life because you are not worthy that means you are responsible in life not worthy responsible in life that's what you are preparing for and because you want to be responsible in life you're already making yourself right now respectable in life respectable people respect you because the way you carry yourself the way you face your assignment and the way you do your duty and the way you get to school and the way you do your assignment everything makes you respectable you are respectable as a student now you'll be responsible in life T transform transform rely on the Lord rely on the Lord studios Teachable, understanding, disciplined, expectant, noteworthy, transformed. Before I leave that uh, point, I so count the letters in the word student. How many letters do you have there? What? Which letter is in the middle? Which letter is in the middle? What does that D stand for? Discipline. Look up here. If you have a bar, at the middle, you put something we call a pivot, or we call it a fulcrum. It will balance. That bar will be horizontal. 
the center of that word student is D, disciplined. If you are not disciplined now, you will not be disciplined, live a disciplined life later. Every little wind that blows will shift you off from your goal, from that significant life. And therefore you want to remember that that D is at the very center of a significant life. No matter what talent, what skill, what ability, what training, and what money is put into preparing for a significant life, if that personal, individual, self-discipline is not in our lives, we cannot amount to much in life. You can go to the best school in the country, and you can be taught by the best of teachers, if that personal, individual, self-discipline is not there, forget about a significant life. But praise the Lord, I see a significant life in front of every one of you in Jesus' name. Make sure that you are disciplined. I come to point number two. The student's pathway to a spectacular life. If I'm going to see somebody spectacular, if I'm looking at somebody and that person is spectacular, what do I learn about that person? 57. Psalm 57. I'm reading from verse 7. Psalm 57, verse 7. 57, verse 7. My heart is fixed, O oh God, my heart is fixed. My heart is fixed, O oh God, my heart is fixed. Somebody who is going to have a spectacular life, a singular life, an important life, a significant life, must have what we call decision and resolve my heart is fixed there must be a goal you see those who play football if the goal post is not there there's no game the game of life becomes interesting when there is a goal the goal post there is what all the footballers are aiming at a kicking for are running towards because of that goal that game becomes meaningful and if you don't have a goal there's nothing to live for it is that goal that keeps you going that's why number one have a goal have a goal and then you can say my heart is fixed oh god my heart is fixed think about it this way this is the goal. Nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. You must come to that point in your life. This is my goal. Nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. And it is when you have a goal like that, there is something to live for. Then, on the basis of that goal, you can say, My heart is fixed, O oh God, my heart is fixed. Psalm 108. Psalm 108. I'm reading from verse 1. Psalm 108, verse 1. O oh God, my heart is fixed. Again, the psalmist is reminding us, I have a goal. Nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. I will not be dissuaded. I will not be distracted. I will not be discouraged. I will not be disappointed. I have this goal. I'm aiming at it. Oh God, my heart is fixed. Psalm 1, 1, 2, 1, 12. I'm reading verse 7. Psalm 1, 
112 verse 7 he shall not be afraid of evil tidings his heart is fixed he will not be afraid of see what they are saying see what they are planning and see what they are conspiring the conspiracy against me you see for a lazy person he sees a lion on every street every little wind that is blowing when he hears the news it's like there's this tornado on the street and every little thing that happens there is an earthquake that has just happened i cannot go to school but for a person that has a goal who knows that this is the goal of my life i'm going to have a significant life and i will pay the price this is the goal once again i remind you nothing more nothing less nothing else Isaiah chapter 50 verse 7 Isaiah chapter 50 I'm reading here from verse 7 For the Lord God will help me Am I talking about you there? For the Lord God will help me Say that for yourself It will help you. This goal, you'll reach the goal in Jesus' name. For the Lord God will help me. Therefore, shall I not be confounded? You will not be confounded. You will not be confused. You will not be conquered. Therefore, have I set my face like a flint. Therefore, have I set my face like a flint? He's saying, that's my goal. That's where I'm going. The Lord will help me. The Lord will be by my side. I will not be confused. I will not be distracted. I will not be disappointed. I will not be defeated. I am going there. Nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. Therefore, I set my face like a fleet that's how to go through the pathway once again write the word student i'm going to use the letters of that word student for you to know the pathway you ought to go through so that this goal you will reach there this top of the mountain you are getting to you will get there in jesus name S, set the goal. Set the goal. Before the footballers begin to play, the goal post is there already. It is not that after they start playing and playing and playing, then somebody says, ah, where is the goal post? The goal post must be there before you begin the game. Set the goal. T, time the goal. Time the goal. Anybody can pass, you know, the final exam of, you know, SS and S if he has 20 years to do it. If he has 15 years to do it. If, you know, he's, uh, you know, going so slowly that before he, before he comes out of secondary school, his uh, classmates, they have already become professors. But you set the time. S, set the goal. T, time the goal you give yourself the time limit by in two years time i expect to have done this in five years time god helping me god supporting me god standing by me god fulfilling his promises on my life i expect to have done this time the goal you uphold the goal uphold the goal do not be a person that is always shifting your goal post always shifting your goal post today the goal post is like this tomorrow you widen it to the other way you narrow it down sometimes you bring it further uphold the goal let that goal be very clear be very definite uphold it stand by it d declare the goal declare the goal tell yourself declare it to yourself 
It's not, you know, something that is just floating in your mind or floating in your head. Write it down somewhere. Write the vision. That whosoever readeth it will run. You declare the goal. Tell your friends. That's what I'm preparing for. Tell those who are close to you. A and B and C and D. And they are holding you responsible to where you said you were going. That's why you declare the goal. E, evaluate the goal. This thing I say I want to do, is this worth my life? Is it worth putting all the money, all the time, all the effort, all the perspiration, all my sweat into it? Evaluate the goal and nurture the goal. Whatever you can read to help you understand that goal more and more. You want to be a doctor, not sure that goal. When I get there, what's the use? Why do I want to be a doctor? What do I want to achieve? What am I contributing to life? What value am I adding to the lives of people if I become a doctor? You will not show that goal. You will read about those who have had those goals before and their challenges and their difficulties and they didn't have the people to help them and yet they got there. That will encourage you. You not show the goal. T, take the goal. Take the goal. From the time of John the Baptist until now. The kingdom of God suffered violence, and the violent take each by force. You will not allow the devil to take your goal away from you. You will take it in Jesus' name. I'm still on that point too. The pathway to a spectacular life. I'm going to start again. S, study the subjects. You search the goal. Now you study the subjects that will lead you there. Uh, you know, somebody just saying, I'm going to be a pilot. He doesn't know anything about aviation, doesn't know anything about aeroplane, doesn't know the requirements the, the, and the electives. That is the subject that will take me there. You have to study the appropriate subjects as study the subjects. T treasure the subjects there are many many subjects people do at school but these ones are important these ones are essential these ones are compulsory because they combine together to transport me to where i'm going treasure the subjects you understand the subjects the subject that you actually need. You know, there are some things that are very easy to learn. But if those things, although they are easy, they will not contribute to where you are going. You might still study them for interest sake, but you are not putting all your life into that. You understand the appropriate subject. D. Devour or drink the subjects. That means that you are thirsty for that subject. You are hungry for those subjects and you devour them. You're reading them. You read them in class. That's when the teacher is teaching you listen. You read them. You, you get to the library. You check up. If you need to check up encyclopedia, if you need to check up other details, you are so hungry for those subjects, you devour them. You drink them like we are drinking water. And it becomes so natural to you that this is what you want every time. Devour or drink the subjects. E, enjoy or endure the subjects. Sometimes they are so wonderful, you just enjoy them. You read them as if, you know, others are reading novels. You read them as if, this is just, you just love it, you enjoy it. Other times they're difficult, other times they're challenging. Other times it's not that easy, but you endure, you endure the subjects and narrate the subjects. Narrate. You narrate it to other people. 
your conversation, you know, you're talking about, you know, that subject. If you meet anybody, they are talking about this, about this, about that. And can I tell you something? Then you bring out your subject. You are narrating, you are telling them, I launch this, I launch this. And if, uh, you know, you are there, if you need to write an equation, you bend down, you write the equation, whether it's chemistry or mathematics, you, you narrate the subjects. And the, everybody that knows you will know that that subject is inside you, you are inside that subject. And they can see that you have a goal, you have a place, you are going. You reach there in Jesus' name. T, translate the subject to life. Translate the subject to life. When I finish, when I make it, because you are going to make it. I said you are going to make it. When I arrive, you are going to arrive in Jesus' name. You are translating that subject into life. This is what will happen. This is what will happen. It's not just about the money I'm going to earn. It's about the contribution I'm going to make to society. It's about the lives I am going to touch in society when I arrive. Now, we're going to combine those two pairs together. You know, I gave you a search on the goal. I gave you a search on the subjects. We're going to combine those pairs now because it is a combination of those pairs that lead us to that significant, spectacular life. Number one, search the goal and study the subjects. Search the goal and study the subjects leading to that goal. T. Time the goal and treasure the subjects. You time the goal. There's a deadline. That's the time I expect to reach there. And also, I treasure very much. I don't play with the textbooks. I don't play with the educative materials that will get those things to me. Time the goal and treasure the subjects. You uphold the goal and understand the subjects. Uphold the goals. Don't be shipped in here and there. Stand for it. Stand by it. Stand through it and understand those subjects. Declare the goal and devour the subjects. Declare the already when you declare you committed yourself when you declare your goal. I am going to be this by the grace of God. People are watching. And if you don't pursue, if you don't pull through, if you don't drive on until you get to your destination, people will say, see, he started, he couldn't finish. He was just bragging. Or just saying, I will, I will, I will. Look at where he is now. You will not be like that in Jesus' name. Declare the goal and devour the subjects. E. Evaluate the goal and enjoy the subject. Evaluate the goal. That's what I'm going to do by the grace of God. That's the reason I enjoy what I'm doing. And not show the goal and narrate the subjects. T, take the goal and translate the subject into fulfillment. There will be a demonstration in your life. I said there will be a demonstration in your life. You will not fail. This goal, you will reach there in Jesus' name. Number one, the student's preparation for his, for his significant life. Number two, the student's pathway to a spectacular life. Number three, do you remember number three? Can you tell me? Wonderful. You're like goal getters. You'll get it in Jesus' name. The students progress in the spiritual life. Can I just remind you? There is the secular life. There is the social life. There's the spiritual life. The complete person is the one, the one that has a significant life we're talking about. Is the one that when you look at the secular life, at the social life, 
and the spiritual life, there is a balance. It is not that it's heavy weight on one side and it's light on the other side. There is a balance in his life. There will be a balance in your life. Towards God, there will be a balance. Towards man, there will be a balance. That's your life. This, your life, will be beautiful. I said your life will be beautiful. Now, we're talking about the student's progress in the spiritual life. Again, we're going to use uh, those letters, student. The letters of the word student. What brings this progress into our spiritual lives? Is seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. Psalm 27 verse 8. Psalm 27 verse 8. When thou said, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Seek the Lord. If your life is going to amount to something significant, spiritually, socially, and in the secular world, everywhere, seek ye forth the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Seek the Lord. T. Trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. Lean on him. Depend on him. Trust the Lord. Psalm 37. I'm reading verse 3. Psalm 37 verse 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land. And verily thou shalt be fed. You will dwell in this land and the Lord will provide for every need of your life in Jesus name. You unite with the Lord. Unite with the Lord. Unite with the Lord. Let there be no separation between you and the Lord. Normally, Satan would like to bring in something into every life that will separate that person from the Lord. You want to bring sin to divide, to separate you from the Lord. You will not be separated in Jesus' name. Psalm 86, verse 11. Teach me thy way, O Lord. I will walk in thy truth. Unite, unite my heart to fear thy name. Unite my heart. Anywhere I am, let that unity, let that connection, let that partnership with the Lord always be there. He says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. You also tell the Lord, I will never leave the Lord. Raining or sunshine. I'll never leave the Lord. Unite my heart to fear thy name. D, desire the Lord. Desire the Lord. Desire him above every other scene in life. Because he is the one that will bring everything to pass your life. His promises will be yes and amen in your life in Jesus' name. Psalm 37, I'm reading from verse 4. Psalm 37, verse 4. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. When you delight yourself in the, that goal that the Lord has painted in your heart, that you say you are reaching there, he, the almighty God, will fulfill it in Jesus' name. S, tell me, seek the Lord. T, tell me, trust in the Lord. U, tell me, unite with D, tell me, desire the Lord. E, exalt the Lord. Exalt the Lord. Exalt the Lord. Always exalt him. Without him, I can do nothing. 
He is the one that has done this for me. I give glory to his name. He solved my problems. He healed my sickness. He promoted me. He preserved me. He gave me this. He gave me this. Exalt the Lord. Psalm 34. I'm reading from verse 3. Psalm 34, verse 3. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Let us exalt his name together. You know, that is what keeps us in the pathway of progress and in the pathway of a significant life. You, you are always giving glory to the Lord, magnifying the Lord. Anything he does for you, I praise you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Any blessing he gives you, I praise you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. And you are telling people, I would have been nothing. But this is just the blessing of the Lord upon my life. Exalt the Lord and notify the Lord. Notify the Lord. When you have a problem... Don't just uh, run away from the Lord. Tell the Lord. Notify him. Lord, I'm going through this. Lord, I'm going through this. Lord, I'm going through that. And when you notify heaven, answers will come. Solution will come. Your life will be significant. You know, if you go through all this that were tied with the student life, you are getting to the top. I said you are getting to the top. You'll be there. We will be there together in Jesus' name. And what is N? Notify the Lord. Psalm 66. Psalm 66. I'm reading from verse 17. I cried unto him. I notified him. I cried unto him with my mouth. And he was extolled with my tongue. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me, but verily, assuredly, certainly, God has heard me. God will hear you. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. I notified him. I said, Lord, look at my challenge. Look at my problem. Look at my need. And the Lord answered me. The Lord will answer you. T, testify of the Lord. After he's done, he has done all that, don't be like those nine lepers. One out of ten came back. Where are the other nine? Psalm 66, verse 16. Psalm 66, verse 16. Come and hear all ye that fear God. And I will tell, I will testify, I will declare what he has done for my soul. I will tell, I will testify, I will witness, I will declare what he has done for my soul. Testify of the Lord. The Lord has shown us the preparation for significant life, the pathway to a spectacular life, and the progress into the spiritual life. My prayer for you is that every promise we have quoted, every declaration of God that we have read will be fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. Before we pray, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28. I'm reading to you now. Here is your portion. I said, here is your portion. I'm reading from verse 7. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come against thee one way, but and flee before thee seven ways. The Lord shall command his blessing upon thee in thy storehouses. And in all that thou settest thine hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Give me a good amen there. Yeah. The Lord shall establish you and holy people unto thee. If thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and ways. And all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord. And they shall be afraid of thee. 
the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, in the fruit of thy cattle, in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto thy land in its season, and to bless, and to bless, and to bless all the work of your hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. The Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. Thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If thou shalt hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day, this day, this day, to observe and to do them. This day, I'll meet you there. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. We're getting there. We're getting there. Already you have seen the way. You have seen what you do. Get up now. Open your mouth before the Lord. Make a commitment. Set the goal. Set the goal. Set the goal. Nothing more. Nothing less. Nothing else.